Cheers, legends. Sammy from Short and Stout Beer Reviews. We've got an old classic Australian craft beer here. Bit of nostalgia. I think it was actually one of the first craft beers I ever did. So it's Hop Hog by Feral. It's an American pale. The percentage. I cannot find. <laughs> Five, I think it says 5.8. It's very small font. But yeah, this will, I remember when I first got into craft beer, this was one of the, one of the beers I first tasted and I was just blown away by the flavour. I just thought, how can beer taste like that? That's awesome. So yeah, let's get into it. I've got proper glassware too because I actually visited the brewery I think the first time I ever went to Perth, it's like a sort of like a big Pilsner glass with the hog on the front. It's pretty cool. Yeah, they're one of those beers now you can get in sort of like Dan Murphy's superstores. Sometimes you might see it in supermarkets. It's not so much in craft stores anymore. But yeah, back in the day, it was considered as one of the sort of it beers in craft. But yeah, you still see them at beer festivals, and they do a lot of limiteds and that as well. This is a good glass. Haven't used it for a very long time. So yeah, more more American style than hazy, which is good. That's what I like. So yeah, it's got a bit of chill haze. Pretty clean and clear though. About a two finger head, very spritzy. I'd say probably light to medium body. Let's go with. Piney and floral. Bit of orange and lemon. It's quite citrusy, bit of sweetness. Might be a touch of like apricot or something like that as well. Yeah, maybe grapefruit. It's definitely citrusy. I reckon the more I smell it, grapefruit, like pithy grapefruit, sort of sweet orange. I'm getting a bit of zestiness. That's why I'm sort of thinking a bit of lemon. Hmm. Let's hope it's as good as what it used to be. I have had it when I've been at festivals and that over the years. But, yeah, most of the time it's at a festival in Melbourne called Gab's and there's so many beers there. So you'll have something like this and you just forget what it tasted like the next day because you've had so many. But, yeah, cheers, peeps. It's always had this sort of zingy carbonation to it. And it's still got that, which is good. It's definitely citrusy. I'm probably not getting as much pine on the palate as what I did with the aroma. It's just so good to have beers like this that they're not juicy, like... It's more about like the, I don't know, like the, they are, they, they're juicy, but not like, not sweet juice in your face, like the bitterness sort of balances it out. It's definitely got bitterness on the finish and it lingers. It's always been one of those beers I thought, even though it's a pale, it sort of drinks like an IPA, which is cool. Like it, it comes across more like a low end IPA because of because of like the punchy flavour and the bitterness. Like I think body wise, you'd probably look at it and think, yeah, it looks more like a pale. But yeah, it's good to see over the years. It hasn't. I don't. I feel like it hasn't changed much. Anyway, maybe a slight tweak here and there. Cheers, Tater. Good to see you. 
Cheers, Drewy. Cool, man. Yeah, I'm definitely up for a big one. Only thing is I'm probably going to have to go get more supplies because, yeah, I don't have much in the fridge. I might even get some spirits. We'll see how we go. And it was good to see you do a beer review the other day, brother. So, yeah, I reckon mainly on the pallets, grapefruit. It's almost like a mandarin sort of quality. It's like, yeah, just all the citrus, but it has that, like, herbaceous sort of herbaceous quality, bitter. It's not really dank. But, yeah, I'd love to know what the IBU is on this beer. For a pale, like, it's it's still probably, like, it's still probably fairly low, but for a pale, I feel like it's probably high end. It's definitely a style I absolutely love these days, like, West Coast pales. You can just smash them. Cheers, Daniel. Good to see you again, dude. So, yeah, like, I love a revisit, and that's something I'm going to do on the channel, obviously, because I've been into craft beer for, like, 15 years or so, but I've only started this channel, like, in the last few months. So there's going to be a lot of beers that I obviously haven't put on the channel. So it's probably cool that I can revisit old classics that I had back in the day and. Yeah, like, see if they're as good as what I remember they were, sort of thing, like that nostalgia. It's cool. May as well top her up. And, yeah, these guys, they're situated in um, the Swan Valley, which is like a wine region. There's a few breweries there, but it's mainly wine. And it's like east of Perth. So, yeah, over in Western Australia. It's a really cool area. Well, especially if you're into wine, you can, I mean, yeah, they do bus tours and that sort of stuff. But if you've got a driver, it makes it a lot easier because they're sort of, it's a quite a big area and it's well spread out. But, yeah, for a beer lover, it's good as well because, yeah, there's quite a few breweries. So, yeah, back in the day when I first got into craft, a beer like this I would have rated, like, high as, like, because it was, at the time, it was, like, yeah, sort of a pioneer. It was so epic compared to a lot of stuff out there, especially in Australia because we were a bit behind the States. I probably would have given it back in the day, like, four and a half out of five. These days, something like this, like, it would be a solid four. Still really good, like. So, yeah, four out of five. So, yeah, there'll be a few more revisits on the channel. Um, a few in particular will be Pirate Life. I got into, like, Feral, Pirate Life, Stone and Wood. Um, vale was another one. What else did I get into in the early days? Uh, Mountain Goat. I think Moondog, maybe. They might have been a bit later, but, yeah. Let's bring back some of the classics and see what they drink a lot. So, yeah, cheers, peeps, for chiming in, and we'll see you on the next one.